Trevor video take two. Oh, you messed it up. Try again. Trevor video take two. I'm not fucked up. All right, Trevor video take two. Isaac. Fuck. All right, Trevor video take two. Yeah, we got it, we got it, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got it. Yeah. All right, what's going on? This is gonna be a bit of a random video because Trevor is in town for just a couple days here. We wanna make a video, don't really have a tutorial plan, so we're just gonna make a cool render. So what we're gonna try to do here is a combination of photogrammetry plus maybe some modeling plus liquid simulation. I think the idea we have is like get a really detailed model of his face in like a weird position and then get that in Blender and do liquid simulation of like some water splashing on his face or maybe some like goop or some other type of liquid that's like kind of going up. And we'll just get this nice beautiful close up of Trevor's beautiful face and just it being demolished by a strange liquid that may or may not be. No, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Any other color but brown. <laughs> We're not doing that, Isaac. All right, so now we need to do a photogrammetry model, but it is sunny outside. Let's check the lighting under the carport, see if that- On the hunt for some good lighting? Let's go Still. hunt. For creating the photogrammetry model, I pretty much used the same setup that I did for my last tutorial on photogrammetry, where I just exported the image sequence, brought it into Reality Capture, and exported the OBJ after processing it there. I brought it into Blender, added a decimate modifier, and made sure to turn off the viewport visibility of the decimate modifier before changing the value, just so the computer doesn't have to make the same calculation twice. Then I went into sculpting and mostly just smoothened out the entire geometry and added it back in detail with the crease tool. The nose was probably the hardest part because it was lacking a bit of geometry, so I tried my best to make it smooth, but in the end, I ended up having to try to tweak the depth of field to just hide the little bits of polygons that you could see. One other thing that I learned through this process was even with a photogrammetry model, it's still good to look at reference because it can be hard to tell where exactly like the nose lines up and where the creases are supposed to be. So now, because I was impatient and wanted to finish the texturing before going to the liquid simulation, I went straight into doing the texture for the head. The main part about that with the human face was just getting the subsurface right. And to avoid having to paint out the hair manually, I created a mask by adding a separate RGB node and using a color ramp to close in on certain values within the relevant channel that gives me the best contrast between the hair and skin. Now unfortunately the mask doesn't get all of the values like the inside of the nose so I did end up having to manually paint them out. To do that I created a new 4k texture. Before I could actually paint it out I had to create a new set of UVs because the UVs of the photogrammetry model are all over the place and for painting it can lead to a lot of little glitches. So in the shader I added the UV map node and in the UV map editor I added one and if that's the one that I have so Selected. If I do any unwrapping, it's going to change it only to this specific map. So we'll keep the original UVs for the photo texture, but the skin will use this custom UV for painting. Now with the UV map selected, I went into edit mode and unwrapped it, and it still made things a little bit spread out, so I messed around with adding in some seams because I wanted to make sure that the UVs of the nose specifically were in the same place. Once all of that was done, I just went in and, and painted it properly. Here's where I also needlessly painted out parts that weren't even going to be shown in the render, and I kind of knew they weren't going to be shown, but for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to waste time doing that. To mix this in, I added it with a clamp to the RGB values of the previous mask, and I set this final value to be the mix factor between a black color and a light gray color. So then when I connect that to the subsurface, that light gray color's luminance value is essentially what the subsurface value will be. Now this is all I did at the time, but later on my friend and mentor Dres showed me how to make an actual subsurface setup, because there are three main layers of the skin. There's like a bottom thick yellow layer, a middle thin brown layer, and a top super thin red layer. So to get that dimensionality, Dres taught me how to mix together these shaders in the setup and make the subsurface scale for each layer different depending on the thickness of the layer. Technically, different parts of the face have different levels of thickness of each of the skin layers, but I did not have the patience to make a texture map for each of these, so I just ended up doing a very basic one for the nose and ears, which I knew would be a lot more red and thin. So after a ton of tweaking, I finally arrived at this final skin look, although just so you know, this is much later on in the process once I'd already done hair and everything like that. So thank you so much, Trace, again for helping me out with that. I really do appreciate it. For the rest of the shader, I added a bump map by feeding the image texture through a contrast node to bump up the contrast before putting it into the height, just to add a little bit more detail. For the hair of this, this was actually my first time doing hair. I followed this tutorial by Anish Arts, which you should definitely check out if you're interested in hair. I basically had to smoothen out the entire head of photogrammetry hair, and then go in and select the vertices of different parts of the head and add them to vertex groups for different lengths of hair that I knew I wanted to do. For this very basic setup, I only did two of those, one for the sides and one for the top. Now it was at this point that I also realized that 
that holding down control or middle mouse clicking gives you a really smooth like zoom in and zoom out of the viewport. I have just been using the scroll wheel this entire time. So if you didn't know about that already, now you know. Like <laughs> now in terms of the actual leakage simulation, this type of detailed collision was definitely the hardest part of the whole render. I duplicated the face mesh, decimated it, and then made that the collision object for the liquids. So it wasn't super, super laggy, but even still so much of this process was just really frustrating because the liquid just kept going through the mesh or getting stuck to parts of it. In this case, I found that increasing the collision sub steps didn't even help much. What I really had to do in the end was just bumping up the resolution of the liquid sim until they weren't going through the mesh. Other than that, the main issue with the liquid simulation was getting the initial velocity and everything working smoothly. I started out the actual liquid simulation by adding in a sphere and setting an initial velocity for that. So the water popped out of it and hit Trevor in the face. I found that the liquid kept deforming its shape though over time. And I think that's because with initial velocity, it seems like it applies the initial velocity to mainly the surface particles of the object. So it wasn't really getting a consistent motion over time like I was imagining in my head. I still went forward with it, but after a full test render in which which the liquid just sort of seemed to brush by his face. I realized that this wasn't the effect that I wanted and that I'd have to redo the entire simulation. So I changed the setup to be, instead of having an initial velocity for the object, I used a force field to push the liquid and that gave me much better uniform motion. I realized that changing the exponent in the diffusion socket under viscosity really helps to keep its shape. So I keyframed that value up until the point when it actually hits Trevor's face to make sure it keeps that shape until then. When I did another test render with higher time step values, I found out that that actually significantly changes the velocity that the liquid will have. So for the rest of my tests, I had to make sure to have the time step values be at the value that I want for the final render. So the keyframes for the viscosity still matched up for the final bake. Once I bake a liquid simulation over the course of an entire day at a resolution of 256, I went in and manually added force fields for the hair to have the hair blow back as the water was going by it. And that was a lot of tweaking because I found that the hair wasn't actually colliding with the head. So I had to angle them in weird ways to make sure it sort of like wrapped around in the proper way. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this, but at the moment, this was all I could really think of and it achieved the rough effect that I wanted. Once I got all of that finished, I did the final touches of lighting. I ended up rotating the HDRI a little bit because I didn't like how much of a bright spot there was on one part of the image and I wanted the focus to be more on the face. In compositing, I added a denoise node and add the lens distortion with the jitter and a smidge of distortion to add that subtle chrom chromatic aberration. And then for the final render, I actually learned from Drace that most EXRs are good for textures, but for animation, it's better to use a PXR24 file type because that loads a lot more quickly on the computer and still gives you really good quality. So that's something I didn't know before this either. So thank you again, Trace. And then finally, after over eight hours of work and a whole week of baking, I did a final render at 200 samples, which took about four and a half minutes per frame and ended up with this final video. <laughs> that was just a joke render. I sent you a I sent you a real version right now. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That is incredible. <laughs> Holy shit, man. It really is so cool, the second one. I mean the first one is it's extremely disrespectful, but the second one is really nice. What's the next challenge gonna be? The next challenge? I don't know. I actually kind of like this format a bit. Like That's me getting hit in the face with mysterious liquids. That's a little <laughs> I mean, odd, think. We can continue the theme. <laughs> you can make a giant water hand come out and like catch me. Ooh. Pull me back into this sea. I really like the idea of a giant water hand. Like a wa like a hand coming up from the water, and like the water's like kind of pouring. But the, off of but it. the but the hand is made of water. Yes, it's made. It's like made of water. And it's it's a hand. It's a water Dude. hand. It's a water it's hand. Water. If any of y'all have an idea for a future video or challenge or something like that, let us know. Comment you know? down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the Patreon. Yes, uh, the Patreon. The link is the somewhere down there. It's this only really seventy eight dollars a month. And me and Isaac will post all sorts of super fun content. You guys are not going to want to see it. It's definitely, totally, totally not worth it. it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching and keep tuned for the next one.
Ready? Okay, three, two, one. one.